Hello everyone, I'm Reza Tangisani and once again I'm going to talk about the approaches that we can decrease the computational time in explicit model. This is the ch third chapter. Uh, please uh, go to our website and download the CAE file so you can follow up my tutorial. And also don't forget to like this video and subscribe our channel. This is the third approach that I'm going to talk about. In the last two videos I'm going to talk about the decreasing time. There are two uh, major approaches one of them is decreasing the processing time and the other one is increasing the increment time in addition if I want to talk about more details there are four categories the first one is mass scaling that we can increase the part density and because of that we can increase the time increment which the first video was about it the second one is increase decreasing the step time so we need to increase the rate of, uh, rate of a process in our simulation the second video is was about it the third one, which is this video, is about the element size. And the last one is about the special approaches that we're going to use in specific models. And I'm going to talk about it in the next video. As we explained the first and the second video, the increment time is based on this equation. As you can see, there are two important factors that affect the increment time model. The first one is the element size. And the second one is the sound speed in the model. The sound speed is related to the mass scaling and I'm not going to talk about it, but the element size is very important in here. As you can see, it has a direct impact on the time increment. If somehow we can increase the element size, we can see that we will increase the increment time, as you can see in this equation. And in addition, by decreasing the number of elements, we can uh, decrease the computational time as well. So besides that it can increase the increment time, it can decrease the computational time for solving each increment. Now here I want to analyze this approach and how we can use this approach. For example, in our tutorial, I'm going to talk about the punch model. You can download it from our website, as I explained in the first slide. And we're going to decrease the number of elements. There is an important factor that we cannot decrease the number of elements after a certain point. For example, if it is the length of the elements, and this is the result that we are getting from the each element, we will see after a certain point, in decreasing the length of the element wouldn't affect our results. And the error would be less than 10%, as you can see from here. So we can stop decreasing number of elements in here and have acceptable results. So we don't lose accuracy of the model. I would suggest you to go with the largest element size and after that you can increase the number of elements. And you see the increasing the number of elements wouldn't affect your accuracy. You can stop there and use your element size. Okay, I think it's pretty much everything for here. Now we can go to the model. The first step is going to the step and checking if the mass scaling option is off. We go here, mass scaling, and set it off. The reason is because we don't need to use mass scaling and we only need to study the effect of element size on the processing time. Okay, we can close it and then we can go to the mesh. In here, we select this view and then we hit this bottom and we change the number of elements like this. We select here, 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 and here. We set one and we select don't allow. We delete it. Okay. And also we need to decrease the number of elements for here. This page, this one, and this. Don't allow. We decrease it to 20. And now we can mesh it. You see the element size is changed at least twice larger than before. And now we can go and submit the job. We go here. We don't need the job. Two, we delete it and we submit it. As you can see, the job is completed and now we can see the result. The maximum stress is around 630 megapascal and you can compare it with the model. But the interesting point is that the model has been solved about 25% of the base model, which is about four times faster. And if you remember, we increased the length of the element size about two eyes bigger in this direction and also in thickness. So 
Based on the equation, it should be at about two times faster because we double the element size, but we observe that it is four times faster. It is because that not also the increment time has been increased, but also the processor can solve each increment faster than before. But there is a question, are results accurate enough and can we count on them? And the answer is that we need to do the mesh study and uh, I'm going to leave it this to you guys. There is another point that I want to mention that the increment time is based on the, the minimum length of the element. So if you have any element with a minimum size, you need to be careful about it and you need to make it larger because sometimes you might, for example, create an element here very small and because of that, your model would be solved larger and it isn't necessary for you to have a small element in here. So you need to be careful about the minimum uh, size of the elements. Okay, I think it's pretty much for, for here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, next video, I'm going to talk about the special method for explicit models for, in, for decreasing the processing time for explicit models. Until the next video, bye.